I know this looks like a calm and serene beach scene, but what's under this ocean may destroy a significant portion of the Pacific Northwest someday. Beneath the Pacific Ocean, a gaping hole is growing, and this hidden force is tearing the Earth apart, and it could one day reshape the entire West Coast. Join us as we explore the death of a tectonic plate, a mighty change that may just cause the next massive shift in this beautiful landscape. But are we ready for the major consequences? Let's find out. What do you think? Are we ready? Yeah. Oh, all right. Confident Kai. I'm not so sure. Now this behind me is Juan de Fuca Strait, an area rich in marine life, of course, whales, some orcas were out there earlier, beautiful tide pools, amazing beaches, but lurking underneath this part of the Pacific Ocean is the Juan de Fuca Plate. Deep beneath these waters, the tectonic plate is dying. Wait, tectonic plates can just die? Does it like crumble into dust or does it go out with a bang? It's more like a slow motion disaster movie, actually. It's being ripped apart and sucked Pretty good, into the right? earth. And its finale may be truly catastrophic. But to understand why, we have to look closer at what's happening beneath our feet. Now I know when we think about earthquakes and catastrophic damage to the western half of the US, many people's first thought might be San Andreas Fault. Well, the San Andreas Fault is well known, but not likely to cause as much damage as the lesser known, smaller Juan de Fuca plate that is right underneath the water out there. And that's part of the issue of studying this plate, making it difficult to access, difficult to monitor. But we do know one day it's likely to cause significant damage that could take out a major portion of the Pacific Northwest here. The Juan de Fuca plate is a leftover piece of the Farallon plate, an ancient giant that was part of Pangaea and that began disappearing under North America in the Jurassic. Now this slow motion collision built landscapes like the Sierra Nevadas and even shaped the Rocky Mountains in an unexpected way. So this ancient plate was like a massive conveyor belt diving under North America and creating mountains? Exactly. As North America consumed the Farallon plate, it eventually broke apart into smaller plates like the Juan de Fuca plate. And now this little plate is about to change the Pacific Northwest in a big way. Scientists recently discovered something alarming. A growing tear deep inside the plate. Like a giant terrestrial paper cut? More like the plate is unzipping itself from the bottom up. Using ocean bottom seismometers, researchers mapped out the plate and found a weak zone of more than 150 kilometers deep. So it's just kind of falling apart. Yeah, kind of. The plate is deforming and it's breaking into pieces. And as it does, it's creating a ripple effect with three potentially huge consequences. Now, first, the tear in this plate may be responsible for some unexpected volcanic activity, especially in central Oregon's high lava plains. But I thought most volcanoes around here were in the Cascades in places like Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. Yeah, that's the super weird part. You see, usually volcanoes form where magma rises directly above a subducting plate. But these eruptions are in an odd spot with a strange mix of rocks that suggest they may be connected to the plate ripping apart beneath the surface. So this plate is not only breaking apart, it's actually making new volcanoes? Exactly. And that's not all. It also could be affecting earthquake patterns along the Pacific Northwest. Wait a second, does this mean it's connected to the big one, a mega quake? Possibly. The Juan de Fuca plate is a key player in the Cascadia subduction zone, one of the most dangerous earthquake zones in North America, apart from my studio, potentially. <laughs> Scientists are still studying whether this tear could increase the risk of a major quake. So that seems bad. Yeah, let's just say that if you live in the Pacific Northwest, earthquake preparedness is always a good idea because it's not a question of if, but when. Okay, that's terrifying, but it can't get worse, right? No, it can, and it already has. One of the most powerful earthquakes to ever strike North America happened here in 1700. As it falls apart, the Juan de Fuca plate is still sliding slowly under the North American plate at the Cascadia subduction zone. And every few hundred years, that slow motion push turns into a violent lurch. And on the night of January 26, 1700, the lurch came in the form of a megathrust earthquake estimated to be between magnitude 8.7 and 9.2. 
that to make these quick because that's that's uh, so how do we know this is all happening yeah great question right well first we know native american tribes of the pacific northwest have oral histories that describe massive shaking and giant waves from this time period second along the coast of oregon and washington scientists covered ghost forests stands of dead trees that suddenly dropped into salt water and died all at once. By analyzing tree rings, we can pinpoint the exact year they died. It was 1700. And that's not all. Across the ocean in Japan, there were records of a mysterious orphan tsunami that hit the coast the same year, with no earthquake to explain it. Now that tsunami was almost certainly caused by the Cascadia quake. So a giant wave traveled all the way across the Pacific? Yep. That's how we know this wasn't just a local event. It was a massive catastrophe of global proportions. So, could it happen again? Yes, not could, it will. I keep saying this. What are you not getting about this, people? It's going to happen again. The Cascadia subduction zone is locked in building pressure right now. Scientists estimate there's a one in six chance of another mega thrust quake happening in the next 50 years. Got it? It's going to happen. Well, that's a cheerful little earful. And know when it's happening in the next six years? Right now. Oh, no, 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 Lord. Uh, no, like an earthquake no. in the Pacific Northwest. Yes. Kai is inevitable. Whee! There you go. I'm going to need a chiropractor visit after this. A chiropractor. <laughs> Wait. Why'd you take me on these vacations if it's so risky? Well, because communities and scientists are working together on ways to prepare. But those plans do have a big problem. You see, FEMA's National Risk Index, a tool designed to help communities prepare for natural disasters, is missing something huge. It dramatically underestimates the tsunami threat from the Cascadia's next megathrust quake. Wait, you're saying the official risk agency overlooks a massive tsunami risk? Yeah, it does. Coastal communities in the Pacific Northwest are most certainly at serious risk. Yet the index labels their tsunami hazard as relatively moderate. Relatively moderate? That is not relatively moderate. No, it is not. I make a point. You're making the point. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you have a strong opinion about the National Risk Index, as you should. How did this happen? There are actually a few problems with the National Risk Index, but one is that it relies heavily on historical data, primarily from the last two centuries. And since the last Cascadia event was in 1700, it doesn't factor into the calculations, leading to a huge underestimation of the risk. So these communities might not be getting the support they need to prepare? Precisely. Accurate risk assessment is how we allocate resources and implement safety measures. Without it, thousands of lives could be at risk. Not if, but when the next big one hits. That's a wake up call. What can be done? Well, one lesson from recent events like the Taiwanese earthquake in 2024 is the importance of preparation before a disaster strikes, not just reacting after. Because if there's one thing we know for certain, it's that these tectonic forces can change the course of human history as they shift and they merge and they even fall apart. Just ask the Vikings. Shaking time. I just want it over. Shaky, shaky. Let's ride the reading. No, we're over. 